Hello bookish people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and in today's video we are going to be reading popular books that I previously DNF'd. This video idea came from the fact that if you watch my July TBR, I pulled two books out of the TBR jar that are super popular books and that I dnf So we're going to go over the TBR for this video and why I DNF'd them, starting with the first book that I read, The Midnight Library. So I dnf this book when we get to the chapter titled The Book of Regrets and the character goes through all her regrets and at the time I found it pretty triggering because I started thinking about all my regrets. I started getting very anxious and I put the book down. I only got 34 pages into the book. Well, to be fair, I was listening to the audiobook and just the word regret and repeat in my brain just was not doing it for me. I decided to physically read it and this is the first book that I read this week. The next book on the TBR for this week is A House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I don't know why. I always want to say The House on the Cerulean Sea but it's the house in this Cerulean Sea. So this is another book I pulled out of the TBR jar. This book, I listened to the audiobook originally for it. I got 53% into the audiobook and I DNF'd it. I was like, I cannot do this anymore. I found the kids in this book to be extremely annoying, but I'm like, is that the story or is that the narration of the audiobook? So we are going to be reading it this week and we are going to be doing a physical read of it. And the third book, I didn't pull it out of the TBR jar, but it's a popular book. I DNF'd it and I actually really want to read it. So we are going to be reading it this week and that is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. So I have my bookmark here where I DNF'd it, page 106. And this book, I did not DNF it for any negative reason. I was actually really enjoying the first 106 pages of this. I started it in January, February, I went into a massive reading slump and I just never picked up the book. In February, my life got super busy and hectic. I didn't have time to read anything physically, and then by the time I wanted to get back around to this book, I was like, oh my god, I feel like I need to reread the first 100 pages because I forgot things, but that seemed like a daunting task to me to read the first 100 pages because I already read them. Like, you know when you start a book, you get a ways into it, and then you put it down, but like because you put it down, you just never want to pick it back up. That's how I felt with this book, but I was really enjoying it, and I really want to read Miss Sporn. This book is like the one that I'm most excited for because I know this one is definitely gonna be a positive experience. Well, I'm hoping so because I enjoy the first 100 pages. This is what I'm reading this week and by the end of the week we're gonna know, was I right to DNF these books or are these books really good and I should not have DNF'd them originally. Okay, so I've been reading this book. I am now on page 34. The lighting and the sound in my kitchen isn't the best, so I'm actually gonna be doing like a different update clip once I kind of read through it and get into my like library so it'll be better quality. I wanted to like mark this moment right now because this is the point in the book in which I DNF'd it originally. And we have like a, par a huge paragraph that spans like two pages where the character is listing out all of the regrets that she has in life. And it's like, I regret, I and then like whatever. And then I regret this, I regret that, I regret this. And like hearing the word regret over and over and over again in my head, really got into my head. You know when you like play back like your most embarrassing moments in your head and then it started making me extremely anxious? So this is the exact point in the book in which I DNF'd it. So I'm gonna try to get through it now and we'll see. I mean, I think there's a difference between physically reading it, right? And then listening to it on audio because when I'm listening to it on audio, like I'm just hearing the word regret play over and over and over again in my head. But when I'm reading the book, I can kind of like skim through this. So I think this is gonna go better than the audio book, but like, We'll see, we'll see. Stuff that doesn't really matter. So the Book of Regrets also triggered our character. Glad to know I'm not the only one. I made it to page 64 in this book, which I typed on Goodreads is 20% into the book overall. And so far I would say I'm enjoying it. I made it past the point in which I originally DNF'd the book, so that already is an accomplishment and I don't see myself DNFing this book in the future. You see the character's reaction to reading the Book of Regrets and me and her had a very similar reaction and my choice was to put the book down. Obviously she's the character of the story, she has to go on. Um, but I thought it was really interesting that even though this book is about her life, we had very similar reactions to reading the book of regrets. Now that I've read a chunk of it, I can tell you what this book is about. In this book, we're following our main character, Nora, and she's kind of going through a hard time in life. She just feels kind of lost. And then she ultimately comes to the decision to unalive herself. She does that and she ends up in the Midnight Library, which is the place that's in between life and death. And there's a librarian there that helps you go through all these different lives. So you can choose which one is best for you. So you basically go and like try on these lives. And when you feel sad, you get pulled out of them. But if you like them, you can continue in them. Where I ended this book before the update is when Nora leaves the first life that she 
she's tried on, which was the life that she was experiencing if she had stayed with her ex-fiance, Dan. So you see her go into that life. They're now married, but it's not all it's cracked up to be. And right now she is now entering her next life, but I have not read that part yet. So overall, I would say I'm enjoying it. The first part of the book, so her going through her real life and then leading up to unaliving herself, then going to the Midnight Library, having the librarian explain everything. That part of the book, I really felt like I was reading. There's some books that you are just drawn into the book and you forget the outside world. That part of the book, it's like I was very aware that I was reading. It's like, okay, I was interested and I was grasping what was going on, but I was also very aware that I was reading and I was getting easily distracted. Like, oh, glance at my phone when I have a notification, look back at my dogs that are sleeping. You know, I wasn't fully invested into it, but once she got into her life with Dan and we were kind of witnessing her experience that first life, I really enjoyed that part. And that part is when I was kind of immersed in the story and I forgot I was reading and the page count didn't matter. Like I wasn't like, oh, what page am I? I also really liked that that first time, like she really quickly figures out that this guy is not for her and she kind of ends that life very quickly. It's not like we're sitting on these lives and dwelling and dwelling on them. While wishing for something better I try to fix things that weren't broken Misunderstandings and words unspoken We fall apart and I won't dare to say Do you feel the same way? Till page 200 in the midnight library and obviously if I read 200 pages in one day you obviously know that I am enjoying the book I haven't read anything today yet I'm really hoping to finish this book today it's already like four o'clock I didn't read today because my parents came to visit me if you don't know I live about two hours away from my parents so they came over to visit me today we went to get coffee went to the beach we went out to eat and it was just a lot of fun but now they left and it is time for me to read the last 88 pages of this book my comments in the first update still stand it wasn't until Norris are trying all these different lives and experiencing all this that I really became invested. I forgot I was reading. I forgot what page I was on. I was just totally immersed in the world, just flipping the pages and forgetting about my outside surroundings. So that's always a good sign when a book can make you do that. And I really love her trying on these different lives because it always keeps the book interesting and you're meeting all these different characters and some of the same characters and you see how they change all from her different lives. And I think it's really interesting. And it really makes me curious to know how this book is going to end. Like, is she going to find that perfect life for her? Or is it going to be one of those endings where it's just like, oh my God, the life I had was the life I wanted all along. So I'm really curious to see how this book ends. But um, yeah, so far, really enjoying it. I would love to finish this today, but I think before I finish it, I'm going to need to take a nap. Because even though we weren't lounging at the beach for hours, just being in the Florida sun drains you. So I'm going to take a nap. And then I'll probably finish this book and really hopefully I can finish it today. Okay, so I didn't end up finishing the book yesterday and this is going to be my last update until I finally finish the book. I have about 50 pages left, but I've been thinking throughout this book about a fundamental flaw in the Midnight Library, like the whole setup of it. And then the character even mentioned it. She goes into all these different lives, but when she enters them, she has no idea who she is in that life and she has to kind of figure it out through talking to people. So she basically has like amnesia of like the first half of her life. And it makes people around her kind of question her like, oh, why are you acting differently today? And it's like, how can you find your perfect life if you don't know what you're going into, if you don't have any memories of your past, because if you wake up, right, and you have a husband, you have a kid, but you have no memory of how you and your husband fell in love. You have no memory of even giving birth to your daughter. Like, how can that be the perfect life for you? Like, how could you fall into that life so naturally not having those memories? The only way you would pick it is your perfect life is if you had some sort of memory, recollection of these events happening to you. Because even if that guy is the perfect guy for you, 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 you don't know him. You just literally woke up and you're married. You already like skipped so many steps. It went from like, oh, I kind of knew you in my root life to now we're married in this life. And it just doesn't seem to work out. Now that's, that's that. I made my iced coffee. I'm gonna finish this book and I'll update you guys when I'm done. This wouldn't have ended with broken hearts. Cause I don't wanna waste my time. finally finished the 
Midnight Library by Matt Haig and I am so happy that I chose this book from the TBR jar that I did this video because I ended up really enjoying this book. Obviously there's things I liked about the book and things I didn't like about the book. We're gonna talk about both and we're gonna start with the dislikes first because I want to end this review on a positive note. So if we're talking about my main dislike for the book, the main reason why to me it could not be higher than a three and a half star rating is because I feel like the discussion surrounding mental health in this book is a bit shallow. It is very clear in this book that Nora is dealing with depression. I mean it's not just me speculating that based on her actions and her inner monologue. She clearly says in the book that she has depression, that she's on antidepressants, and I just really don't love the messaging of this book that basically at the end it's like, oh well I just have a new outlook on life and now I'm a happy person, right? Like depression goes away if you just have a different outlook on life. You just gotta look at things differently. You can't regret your past and you're just gonna be happy. And I just don't love that because clinical depression is a real thing. Having chemical imbalances in your brain is a real thing. You can't just like will your depression away having a new outlook on life. Now if we never talked about depression and antidepressants and this mental health aspect to the book and we were just following this character who was just going through a hard time, going through a rut, just being stuck in life, but not necessarily to the point where she's like, I am depressed and I am on antidepressants, then I think I would view this book a lot differently because okay, you're just kind of stuck in life and you just kind of need to have a new outlook and a new way of looking at things to help yourself like improve and succeed. Okay, I totally understand that, but I just don't like that we're surrounding the topic of mental health and then we're just being like, okay, she's all better now. She has a new outlook on life. So I guess that's kind of my main gripe with the book. So taking that component out of the story, I think the book overall does have a pretty like wholesome message to it. That message being like, you know, you can't regret the things that you didn't do because everything you chose in life led you to where you are now and this is exactly where you're meant to be. And you just have to be yourself, believe in yourself, trust in yourself and do what feels right to you. And I think it is an overall really great message. If you like self-help books, obviously you'll like this book, right? Because this book is like if self-help and fiction had a baby, I'm not too well versed in self-help books. This is like the closest thing I have come to reading a self-help book. So I don't really have too many informed thoughts and opinions on that genre. Um, but like I said, I overall think it has a nice message to it. I just wish we would have not had the mental health component to it. I was talking about the writing style and the format of this book. I really love the short chapters. I love any book with short chapters because it makes me feel like more productive because I'm just like flying through chapters. The writing style of this book is very easy to read and I thought there was a lot of great quotes in this book as well. Like if I was to annotate, if I was an annotation girly, like I would be going crazy with this book because there is definitely a lot of great quotes. And also this book was just kind of fun to reflect on myself and thinking about different decisions I would make and be like, wow, like what, what am I doing in these different parallel universes? Is there a parallel universe out there in which I am a pop star? Because like that is my 10 year old dream to be on a pop star, okay? I used to be in the living room like blasting Hillary Duff music with a fake microphone and like annoying my whole family. In what parallel universe am I that? Like in what universe did I actually become a pop star? You know, these are the things that I was thinking about while reading this book. And I am so happy that I picked this out of the TBR jar because if I didn't pick it out of the TBR jar this month, I have no idea when I would have ever gotten to it. If we don't feel the same. Okay, you guys, I finished The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune and never updated you guys because it has just been a busy week. But you know what? I sat down, I read this book, I finished it, and in this book, I am so happy that I pulled it out of the TBR jar. I'm so happy that I did this video in general. The Midnight Library, I would say, was a positive experience, and this book as well a super positive experience. And I'm very excited to move on to my other TJ Klune book, um, Under the Whispering Door, because I actually really enjoyed this one. The first time I read this book, I read it via audiobook, and I just could not do it. I got 53% into the book, and I was like, this book is just not not for me. I don't get why everybody loves it. So this time around, I wanted to do a physical read of the book. And after I physically read it, I did listen to a chapter of it on audio because I wanted to see like, okay, like why is my experience so different audiobook versus the physical read of it. I know I know what happened. I know what went wrong the first time. This book is definitely best physically read because the narrator of this audiobook, the way he does the children's voices is just so annoying, specifically Chauncey's voice, a little bit of Lucy's voice as well. Just so annoying. Like I couldn't get past it. It was just so cartoonish, right? That's like the best word I can use to describe it. The voices were very cartoonish. Where here I can read it, right? So I'm like having my own voices in my own head and the kids are not annoying. And this actually made me question my stance on children and books in general because typically I would be the person to say like I don't like kids in books but also I, I primarily listen to audiobooks and I think the way the narrators narrate children's voices are just super annoying. If I physically read a child in a story versus listening to the audiobook I think I like that a lot better because again I don't have to associate this like adult do it, trying to do a kid's voice and it's like annoying and cringe. Everything everyone was saying about this book I understand now I have boarded the hype train and I thought this was such an amazing read. If you haven't read this book you are following our main character Linus. 
and he works for the Department of Magical Youth and he is a caseworker, so kind of like a social worker, but in a magical setting. And he gets assigned this top secret case where he is to go to this orphanage that nobody knows about. It's top secret. And there, there's all these children that are like different than your average magical children. So definitely a great book for found family, people coming together, just very wholesome book. I really wish that I would have finished this book before I made my found family book recommendation video because this would be a perfect candidate to be on that list of found family book recommendations. And this found family is even more fun because they're all just like these magical creatures who really are putting aside their differences and coming together and learning to work with one another. If you are someone like me who is listening to the audiobook, you're like, it's not doing it for me. Seriously, try reading the physical books. I think you'll have a much better experience. And the last book we are going to be reading for this video is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. So it's supposed to be my year of fantasy, my year of Brandon Sanderson. We are at the end of July and this is all the Brandon Sanderson I have read. Actually, that's not true. I read Trust of the Emerald Sea and then I DNF Frugal's Wizards. So... I want to start my Cosmere journey. I want to read the whole Cosmere. It's just a goal of mine. Everybody loves Brandon Sanderson. I love Trust of the Emerald Sea and I remember really loving the first 106 pages of this. We're going to start our Cosmere journey and I am finally going to complete Mistborn. finished part one of Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. So far I am really loving this book. I love the plot. I love the characters. I love the pacing. Like everything about this book I love. I really don't have anything negative to say about this book. I guess the one thing I would say about this book which I wouldn't even consider it a negative is that I think it is a slow read and I don't necessarily mean in terms of the pacing and the plot but I just mean like I didn't have this book at page 106. That was in the middle of a chapter two which was chapter five. So what I did is I just went back to the beginning of chapter five and reread that specific chapter and I was not lost at all. I remembered a lot from January and I just kind of continued on and now I'm on page 187 but so we're going from 106 to 187 that's like an 81 page difference and I feel like it took me so long to read those 81 pages so this is definitely not a book you just like sit down and binge it this is a book that you take your time with you know I think there's books out there that it's okay to have that slower reading experience with like not every book you have to sit down and binge in a day although I do love to do that but even in terms of the plot I said it wasn't slow paced but I guess you could consider it slow paced but we are on page 187 and and we haven't really gotten into the action of the story, right? We're still in the setup phase for the action of the story. That's like 200 pages of setup. I mean, I don't even know what's going to happen in part two yet. But that's not a bad thing either because I think I, I hesitate to call books a slower paced because me personally, I hear the term slow paced and my brain automatically goes to, oh, it's going to be boring. And that's not necessarily the case because slow paced could just be an okay in the beginning where, you know, we're doing our world building, we're doing our character development. It's more like character based. And then as we get into the story and we know our characters and we know our world, that's when it's going to get action packed. So it's not a bad thing to be a slow paced book or have a slow paced beginning to a book. But I guess, like I said, I hesitate to call it that because I just think slow pace means boring but I don't think that is actually true it's something I have to unlearn I'm interested to see how the rest of it goes something I've heard about Brandon Sanderson's writing is everyone says he has the most insane plot twist and like the endings are always just like WTF what happened I'm just very excited to get into the action of the story and see what surprises are in store for me near the end or at the end of this book but yeah so far I am really enjoying it this is a book I definitely want to take my time with been a couple days since I last updated you guys but you guys I have made so much progress into Mistborn this book has taken me over a week to get to this point and I am on page 473. This book has been a slow journey but I finally feel like I'm getting into a good rhythm with this book. Yesterday I was reading this book Sunday and Monday. Today is Tuesday. Sunday and Monday I was reading this book and I was just like binging it chapter after chapter. I think past the 350 pages is really where I'm like okay very very invested and not falling asleep. Although I wouldn't say like the three first 350 pages were boring at all. Just a lot of setup and I just think it was the time of day I was reading the books like I was reading at the end of the day. I don't know what's going on with me. I was going through a tired spell last week. We are out of that spell and we are getting into Mistborn. I would love to read it all day today. I could finish it today if I really wanted to. Uh, not if I really wanted to because I do really want to but if I didn't have adult responsibilities like running a business and like going grocery shopping and you know cleaning taking care of my dogs like then 
I could finish it today. Although we're gonna try. We're gonna try so hard to get all our chores done so we can binge this book. Last night I ended up reading reviews of this book on Goodreads. Non-spoiler, of course, and everyone was just saying like the last 150 pages, the last 20% of this book was just absolutely crazy and they loved it. So that is part of the reason why I'm just so excited to get to the end. I just wanna know how is it gonna play out? What characters can we trust? What is gonna happen from here? Something already kind of crazy happened that set their plan back and I just, I, I wasn't expecting that at all. And I just, I'm loving it. I am loving it. Also, what I didn't realize was gonna be in here that I'm very happy is in here is found family. I don't care what genre it is in, I absolutely love found family. I love strangers coming together and just like creating this like really like strong bond with each other and the unconditional love and support they have for each other. And I just think it was so sweet. And I love that it's in here with the crew. And it kind of reminds me in a way of Trust of the Emerald Sea with the pirate crew. Very kind of similar vibes. Obviously, totally different stories, totally different stakes in those stories. And obviously, it's the same author. So it's not surprising that there is some similarities in those crews. And I don't mean like in personality traits, but just in the feeling that it's giving me. Like the found family element that I'm feeling in this book and the warm, cozy feeling that part is giving me in the uh, warm, cozy feeling that the pirate crew in Trust of the Emerald Sea was giving me. Like it just... Go, you know, it just makes sense that it reminds me of each other. Interesting too, throughout this book, like as we get to know different characters, I kind of have these like preconceived notions of who I can trust and who I can trust just based on their introduction to the story. And now that we're getting towards the end, I am starting to question those characters. I'm like, okay, I kind of didn't trust him in the beginning, but do I trust him now? Or I really did trust this specific character in the beginning, but I'm not so sure if I trust him now. And I'm just so interesting. And that's why I'm just so excited to see the ending of this book, to see like, okay, who is really the good guy? Who is really the bad guy of this story? So far, really enjoying this. I wanted to give one last update before I get into the insane ending of this book, just based on what people are saying online. I just feel like, I feel like it's gonna be a crazy ending. To make you leave me first It is finally the end of this vlog because I finally finished Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson and I am so happy that I read this book. I'm so happy I did this vlog in general. I feel like it was a pretty good like reading experience. All books that I DNF that I ended up liking, I rated the Midnight Library, four stars. House of the Cerulean four stars. And what did I rate Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson? A four and a half stars, which is amazing for a fantasy book. I really enjoy this book a lot. Now, a lot of people might be surprised that it's not a five star because I feel like everybody rates this book five stars, which I do think this, I see why people would rate this book a five star book. But for me, it didn't have that five star feeling to it. But at the same time, there's nothing about this book that I can criticize. I love the pacing, I love the plot, I love the characters. And what I really love about this book as well, like yes, there's like, this book kind of has something for everybody in it, right? Like there's action in here, but there's also a lot of character development in this book. And like, I'm somebody who loves character-based stories. I love a plot-driven story, but I also love when we focus on the characters. I mean, that's why I love like books like Ellen Hildebrand novels, right? Because those are very character-based stories. This is a very character-based story as well. And it's also a plot and action story, especially towards the end of this book. I mean, in the beginning, it's a lot of setup. Up, but there is still action and there's still world building and I just that's what I really love about this book there's something for everybody in here so the character based reader in me loves it and also the plot driven reader in me also loved it as well okay I switched to my car because I thought I had to be somewhere sooner than I actually do like I'm early anyway besides the point so um yeah I really love the story because it is a character based story it's also a very plot driven story and the way the book ended it wrapped everything up nicely but you still want more like I am comfortable waiting to read the well of ascension for a little bit I don't need to read it immediately because I really like the way the story ended but I'm still intrigued and I obviously want to continue on in the trilogy I guess I was just expecting expecting the ending of this book to be like some crazy cliffhanger and that's not what it was at all um, but yeah, I really love Vin. I love her as a character. I actually really like Kelsey. I love Sazed. I honestly loved everybody on the crew, and I really love the found family element of the crew as well. Like, I just love all these people coming together, kind of that unexpected family. Found family is one of my favorite tropes, and I thought it was done really well in this book. I also love Ellen, and I was, like, really just, I was waiting for something bad to happen between Vin and Ellen, because I just, like, I, when people talk about Miss Moore, no one ever talks about romance. And obviously, there's like a little romance. There's some sparks between Vin and Ellen. And so like the romance reader in me was like, oh my god. But the fact that no one ever mentions romance when talking about Brandon Sanderson or when talking about Miss Moore, I was like, oh my god, something bad's gonna happen. One of them is gonna get murdered. Someone's gonna get betrayed. Like, something's gonna happen. 
Um, so yeah, overall really, really enjoyed it. And I'm very just, I'm happy I filmed this video. I'm happy with all the books that I read and I will see you guys in the next one. Subscribe down below for more vlogs and yeah, see you guys in the next one. Bye. All these right